We're here at Vagabond Brewery and we're kicking it with Sebastian and Dylan, so let's get to it. Okay, so I just want to welcome you guys here to um, uh, kicking it with um, Spend It Forward. I'm familiar with you guys but, um, and with Vagabond, but just tell me a little bit about the history of Vagabond Brower. So it actually starts back in 2009 when our three founders, uh, Dave, Matt and Tom, actually ended up um, you know, meeting over beers uh, while they were playing music um, and uh, they all met originally from um, where they, when they used to teach English to you know, kindergarten and all this kind of stuff and, and they you know, talked about their love for beer, love for music and you know, on the weekends they, they play music and at the same time brew beer in Matt's kitchen. Uh, and not to be mistaken with uh, in the bathtub. A lot of people perceive if you're doing home brewing, it's always in the in the bathtub for some reason. But that's actually pretty disgusting. Uh, <laughs> you have to be very clean when you're when you're brewing beers. So they did in the kitchen. Um, but yeah, and uh, slowly but surely, they you know gained a little rapport. I mean, beginning they were just you know giving it to friends and family. And then in 2013 is when they opened up the tap room in the Antwerpenish class of three. Um, they are all Americans and they were looking for styles that they couldn't necessarily find here in Germany. I mean, everybody's happy with the German Helles, I mean, you can't beat them in their, in their own game. Happy with the German Pilsner. Don't touch the Weizen either, I mean, the Germans know their craft. But for things like pale ales, IPAs, uh, session beers, um, even stouts and uh, more exciting, um, you know, crazy experimental beers, um, they're just hard to find here in Germany. Um, what I think is also interesting is that it's two passions, their love of music and their love of really good craft beer that kind of brought these partners together to form Vagabond Brauerei. Um, how much to this day does music play influence in their company, let's say, emotion? Quite heavily, I, I, would, I would say still. Um, so we were founded by three musicians, but what really kept them together was the passion for beer. But Nonetheless, music never left us, and, and I think there's uh, some parallels to be drawn between uh, the diversity of beer and the different types of music there that exist, and so we try to reflect that with every beer that we produce, especially in our bottles, by also creating playlists, uh, self-curated playlists where everybody in the company contributes to mm, making this playlist that we add as a QR code on the back label of the bottle, but <clears throat> that being said, even when we have outdoor events, with our, with our tap room and with the beer garden, there would always be musical events also. And actually we've got a very exciting collaboration happening right now with a local band called Kicker Dibs. They're a band here from Vedding. So we also collaborate with musicians quite a bit too. And uh, we actually came out with a special beer for that collaboration. It's called the Backstage Helle, uh, which has the, basically the logo of the band and the faces of the band members on it and their new album uh, also uh, linked with the QR code. And so, which I find that you have a great uh, assortment of beers. Uh, very, very drinkable. The bitter is really nice. The, the Session IPA I, 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 I like a lot. The Hellas is, is quite uh, wonderful and drinkable and we we're happy to have it on our platform and we've been we're already working with Mark Talanoin and it's nice to see people like, oh wow, let me get a six pack and they're surprised. Like, it, it was actually unexpected surprise and pleasure that it was at Mark Talanoin and soon we're going to be at Supermarkt together as well. Um, yeah. So I see there's a lot of variety in the assortment and I imagine you have a lot of personalities um, in your group. So if you had a song or, or something that, since music plays such a vital part of Vagabond, what would be a song that would define who you are? That's really difficult. I mean, coming from actually having studied music, uh, I'm very eclectic in that sense. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the, what, what I really associate uh, specifically Vagabond with and also my kind of relationship to it is the, 
have these, you know, the old, the old, old time jam band every other Sunday back in the day when we were all allowed to meet in the bar. Um, and that just reminded me so much of like kind of the Americana music that you get in the States. Um, very often at beer festivals and stuff like that. But if we're going to go with an album or something like that, I would say um, a band specifically, The Devil Makes Three, which I believe is actually originally from Santa Cruz. Young people doing kind of country bluegrass uh, tunes. And um, I think the tune would actually be All Hail, because that, uh, that represents me. So. Well, I'm going to have to, uh, I was inspired by what you said in terms of uh, going more down the folksy road. Mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm a big fan of. Uh, Fleet Foxes, and there's this one song, White Winter Hymnal, and they've actually played a couple times in Berlin, and I saw them every single time, and it's just got this very ethereal sort of feel to it. It always reminds me of those, when it's a nice day out, <clears throat> you spent a lot, of, a lot of time indoors, and it's sort of that um, kind of twilight feeling where the sun is just about to set, and you take those first couple pedals on the bike, just lifting yourself up, and you feel that first bit of wind. Uh, that's what that song always makes me think of, and so, yeah. It, uh, that gets me going. Which brings me, the reason why I wanted to ask this question was just not a, a trip down cheesiness. Which <laughs> you kind of put us in that spot though. <laughs> I know, because I uh, wanted to get to something which I find uh, I like very much is that your branding looks very much like album covers, I would say, mm -hmm. and evoke a certain sense of emotion. Sure, I mean, where we want to take our brand <clears throat> and what was always the, the idea behind it was to create an experience for someone. You're not just drinking a beer, but it's supposed to evoke so, certain emotions within you. Um, that's what the label is meant for. It's meant to grab your attention. It's also meant to make the beer more approachable to people who have never had any experiences with, let's say, an IPA or a pale ale. Uh, make it more accessible to them, get them interested, and then together with that playlist and also sort of just the atmosphere that we try to cultivate within our, our bars and, and, and in the future with our beer garden here, sort of this policy of everybody's welcome, everybody's supposed to feel at home, we have something for everybody, and you can come in and not know anything about craft beer, and yet still you'll see the brewmaster sitting at the bar and you can talk to him about it, and he's happy to, to share his wisdom. You can always talk to us and it's never a case of, well, you know, kind of this snobby kind of, you don't know craft beer, what are you doing here? Uh, How important is diversity and inclusion to the Vagabond uh, brand? Well, I think just by <clears throat> the nature of, of the company, that the people, the backgrounds that the people working for the company, the name of the company being called Vagabond, it very much has to do with being open and traveling and getting used to new cultures, getting, getting acquainted with new ideas and confronted with different viewpoints. Um, there, there's a, a very wide array of nationalities represented within the business. Uh, like you said, also we have a female brewer. <clears throat> Historically, actually, uh, females were responsible for brewing beer, um, and she's actually devoted one of her beers uh, towards that tradition. It's called Ale Wife. It's a white IPA. So it is very important to us, um, and, and not just uh, for the sake of um, including let's say females within as, as part of the diversity but you'll also see it hung outside our tap room uh, we don't tolerate any kind of harassment towards any kind of group of people uh, we want everybody to feel included and, and welcome and, and at home um, so could you talk about like what if everything is ideal when would you like to be open what can we do here like I know that this is planned for events but not, it's also you know a, a facility for growing stuff um, yeah, I mean, we have a lot of stuff planned. Um, I mean, bouncing off of also these online tastings, which uh, have been a, a massive success and also proven that, you know, there's no, nothing going to stop nobody having, having a nice beer with your colleagues or anything like that. Um, right now, um, we are going to be planning brewery tours, which would be kind of a similar thing with these online tastings. So um, you can come in, have a look at the brewery. Uh, someone like me or Sebastian here will be explaining how beer is brewed. Um, if we're lucky enough to have Eric, our brewmaster here, he'll probably throw in a couple of snippets. Um, with a little bit of salt involved, you never know. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's, that's one of the, the, the most exciting things about these craft beer, uh, this craft beer movement is also have, as a customer on the other side of things, being able to kind of dive in and, and see for yourself and so we definitely want to provide that and then at the end maybe with the tasting kind of the classic might involve food as well um, we're still kind of bouncing off ideas 
Um, but then that kind of leads, you know, of going into the beer garden. Maybe some nice, uh, um, you know, bands coming in here, like we talked about, music is extremely important. Um, we might be able to also do, uh, depending on how we communicate with uh, the landlords and everybody around here, also do a beer festival. That's mm -hmm. also uh, on the up and up, kind of like a la Berlo, a la uh, Omnipolo, you know, all the, all the, all the, the breweries around. So that'd be really exciting, and to be able to invite other breweries as well, do tap takeovers. I mean, the sky's the limit. Uh, well, I just want to say thank you, um, and uh, we will be seeing uh, everyone either at Marktal Lenoin or uh, Vagabond's going to have their stand at Supermarkt. And we're in the same uh, alley at Spender Ford, so there's a lot of businesses there that are supporting the platform and supporting Berliner Tafel. So come find us on Saturdays at uh, Marktalanoin or Supermarkt and maybe more markets to come. Thank you for kicking it with us at spendedforward.com. Cheers, guys. You walk into the, to the tap room and it's this aesthetic, this kind of, you know, Americana, old time aesthetic. It's really cozy. And if you hear just like, it just immediately fits.